everyone, welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. So in a recent Stamp Junkies poll about what videos you'd like to see me do, somebody asked about masking fluid. So I thought today I would do a quick video and quite often we might colour something, or we might stamp something and then think, well, I'd really like to do a different background. So this is a piece I coloured in recently in an Arteza video, all about how to get good quality surprise at a cheap price. And you can check that out in the top right hand corner. But what I wanted to do now is add a background. It might not necessarily be that easy to add a background now that I've done all of this coloring, particularly if I wanted to work with watercolors, but I don't want to mess with all of my beautiful coloring. So how do I do it? Well, masking fluid is going to be the perfect way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just unscrew this lid. Now, as always, I'm going to squirt a little bit off to the side just to make sure that I can get going. So it comes out cloudy, but it's going to dry clear. And all I'm going to do is, don't panic, but I'm going to put it all over my image. And you don't have to have a thick coat, and you don't have to be overly precise either. So you can see here how I'm just kind of squeezing, and then I'm going to use my nozzle just to kind of go all over. And I'm not thinking about it like a nouveau drop or anything like that. So I might just squirt out a large amount like this, and then I'm just going to use my nozzle to get around the edges of my flower. So you can see how I'm just kind of allowing it to go. I'm not worried that it's cloudy or that it's a little bit lumpy. All of those things really don't matter for working with masking fluid. Now, if you find that it's getting bunged up, of course, you know what tool I'm gonna to tell you to use, and that's going to be your craft pick. So I'm just going around my edges like this. Again, I don't like to go too far to the edge while I'm squeezing. I like to squeeze inside my image and then use my nozzle to pull it out to the edge. I find that gives me a little bit more control and a little bit more precision on working with my masking fluid. Now you can buy bottles of masking fluid and then paint with a paintbrush. I find that's a little bit too faffy. I like having it in these pieces like this. Um, this one just had a little bit of gummed up, so you can see that I can just pull that out, pop it to the side. Another reason I like working on something like the glass mat. So I'm just pulling this out right to the edge, like so. Now if I do have a delicate area, again, I have two options. So something like the stem, when I get to that point, I have a couple of different things I can do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squirt some onto my palette area, and then I'm gonna grab a micro brush, and you know how much I love these micro brushes. I'll link, of course, them in the description for you. And then all I'm gonna do is use that micro brush to dab it in down the stem, just like this. And this allows me that extra precision. So then I don't have to buy two lots of masking fluid. I can just do those delicate areas and put it down my stem. Again, I can just do this stem here, dab it in. Micro brushes are great because you can create your own kind of crystal katanas and pick up sticks with deluxe adhesive. You can fill in fine areas. You can do all sorts of things with them. I can do this stem up here. You can get different tips on your micro brushes too, but I like these purple ones. I find it's a good size for pretty much all of my projects. And as I say, this masking fluid is going to dry completely clear. Well, clear-ish. But I'm also not worried because it's going to peel away and it's not going to take away any of my colouring that I spent so long doing. But this is going to allow me to cover this up and then not worry about what background I want to put on here. I'm thinking like a nice light blue wash would be perfect. And some of these details up here are quite delicate. So this is just going to allow me the precision to just dab this in like so. I mean, how quick is this? Then we're going to allow this to dry. It'll probably take maybe half an hour. It really depends on how thick the coat is. Um, I mean, something like this is going to take a little bit longer, but I can also just take some of this out. 
and pop it up here, but it's not going to react with any of my alcohol ink coloring. You can see here how nice and easy this is. So I'm using up a little bit of the material that we used on here and I'll even that out as well. So I'm going to keep working on here and then we'll come back once it's all finished. So our um, mask has dried and you saw that I kind of took a little while to dry, even the uh, time lapse timed out on me. But hey, um, I applied it a little bit too thick on these flowers. And so really what you want to wait is for it to go clear as it has done now. This took me a little bit longer, as I say, than I expected to, but it does get there in the end. But do wait for it to go clear. So a little bit thinner than I did, um, but wait for it to go clear. It kind of goes jelly-like. Um, and now you can see I can touch it and it's absolutely fine. So what we're now going to do is apply our background. As I say, if you didn't see the video in, on how I colored this in, it was using the Arteza alcohol markers. You can check it out in that top right-hand corner. Um, super simple coloring. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the Ulta New Turquoise Liquid Watercolor. And I only want a very light wash in the background. So I'm just going to squeeze some out onto my palette. And I'm going to use a Nouveau Water Brush to add water into it because I really do only want a light color. And I think I'm still going to add more water still because I want this to be super light, very delicate. And I'm going to start off by being on the flower. And then I'm just going to start adding color. You can see here. So the mask fluid is going to resist and it's not actually going to stick to any of my alcohol coloring. So it's just going over the edges. And what it does is it grounds my flower. It adds a little bit of interest and detail to the background. It allows me to get into some of those intricacies and I don't have to worry about being really detailed and fussy. I can just kind of go around the edges like this. Super easy. And you can see I'm just kind of going backwards and forwards, very simple. But this is the beauty of masking fluid. The other thing is I used a hybrid ink when I stamped out this image. So I stamped this out with the Gina K Amalgam ink, which again, I will link in the video description for you. And that means that I can mix Copics, watercolors, color pencils, Gamsols, all these different mediums in one image. And my ink pad is not going to react. Another really cool fact. And of course I can do an ombre effect. I can go darker at the bottom, just add less water to balance out that watercolor. And I can go back and I can add more colors. So you can kind of really play with this. I'm just gonna go with something very simple. And then I can mount this onto a card afterwards. What I will do, of course, is my very simple matting. As you know, white card base, Nina Solar White, eight and a half by 11, cut it in half, score it down the middle. A piece of that black velvet cardstock, uh, four inches, so yeah, four inches by, um, five and a quarter, and then this will be cut down to three and three quarters by five inches, and then that will map perfectly. I'll show you a picture of the finished card at the end, but it'll be very simple matting. Now I'm just gonna dry this off for a second to make sure that watercolor is dry, because I don't want to mush anything together. Sentiment wise, I tend to either do like a hello, thank you, like basic sentiments that I would use all the time, maybe a happy birthday, because I send out a lot of birthday cards. So just a quick dry to make sure that watercolor is dry. I have a piece of kitchen towel here ready. I like to just blot up any resisted watercolor because I don't want to rub that onto the rest of my image. Top tip there. So I'm just gonna do this because when you're gonna rub this masking fluid off, you don't want to rub off um, and then you're smearing your watercolors all over. So just a piece of kitchen towel, paper towel, whatever you like to use. I'm also gonna wipe this up because I am the person who would put my card in there and end up with a big blue smear. So now I'm gonna rub off the masking fluid and just to do that, all you're gonna do is put your finger over it. And you can see it's just rubbing off. It doesn't take any of my coloring with it. It just rubs off and we just throw this away. Super, super simple. 
So I'm going to rub this off all over and then my image will be done. And it's protected my colouring, which is exactly what I wanted it to do. It just comes off like a jelly-like substance. You know when you buy a magazine and you have a toy or a free gift that's glued to it? It kind of reminds me of that stuff. And if you just roll all over your image, that's kind of how you do it. Um, just work in sections. But you can see here it's really easy. Even those areas that were super thick, it's really easy. And I just like to roll my finger over. And also it's kind of a bit like blue tack in the fact that if you have an area that's stubborn, you'll find that it helps remove other pieces. So if you just go over it with itself, it will help um, remove that. So I'm just gonna take this large area off. But you can see it's not tearing my paper or anything like that. And don't forget, Perks members can shop at Tonic Studios for 10% off. And sometimes we have those flash 20% off sales too. And so there we go. Now we have that perfect watercolor background and that mask fluid meant that we didn't have to do any of those intricacies, anything like that at all. It was just so, so simple. So that's what masking fluid does. That's how you use it. Don't put it on as thick as I did. Go with those thinner ones. Remember your micro brushes, they will really help you too. Uh, and then you can just add beautiful backgrounds or mask out areas so that you can work on other things too. It's really, really a helpful tool in your craft gym. One of those bottles that you just really want to have to hand at any time. So thank you so much for joining me here at the Hedgehog Hollow. As always, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, hit the join button to save tons of money on all of your crafty purchases and give us a thumbs up. Both things really do help support us here at the Hedgehog Hollow. We really do appreciate you coming here and viewing and supporting us every single day. Come back tomorrow for another tip trick tutorial or maybe something a little bit different, you never know. And I will see you then. Happy crafting everyone, bye.